In today's video, we're going to smell 10 raw materials. Uh, I thought we'd, uh, we'd have a sort of smell of some raw materials. It was suggested in the comments of one of the videos that I uh, kind of asked for some suggestions of what you would like to see. And this was one. So we're going to smell some naturals in this one. And I've just picked 10 kind of random samples um, that I have in my... I have a little box of like hundreds of different materials. I only keep like the main things that I typically blend with on this table and so it's not cluttered and I keep like all the other samples in a big box basically so I uh, yeah it's just to keep things tidy here but we've got some samples and yeah we'll have a smell the first one is called I'm actually not sure how to pronounce it to be honest Kella I think steam distilled essential oil is called Kella and I'll put up the name on the screen. And these are all purchased from Eden Botanicals in America for anyone interested. And... So what do I get from this? This is odd. <laughs> this is quite unique. It has a... A little bit of a slightly piercing freshness. Not quite mentholated, but on the way there in terms of the fresh quality that it has. There's something just a little bit menthol or minty about it. At the same time, if you just breathe very gently and softly, you get something that could almost remind you of something like industrial paint thinner. If it was in the distance, like imagine if there was some kind of very strong solvent of like paint thinner that had been cracked open on the other side of the room and someone's cleaning their paintbrushes, but more like industrial kind of strength. And you get a little bit of a waft of it down the corridor, so to speak, or across the room. It's got something that reminds me a little bit of something kind of more mechanical in a way, almost like that kind of, like that kind of um, strong kind of solvent or something. At the same time, there's also another kind of quality to it, which is a little bit incense-y. So it's quite unusual. There's also a slightly woody aspect to it. Kind of a little bit herbal, a little bit rooty, a little bit woody. Kind of fresh, but also, like I say, a little bit solvent-like. It's very unique, quite interesting. There's also kind of a green aspect, which kind of mirrors something a little bit like Maybe a little bit like a cannabis essential oil, you get that kind of slightly kind of more earthy kind of green leafy kind of smell. So it's very multifaceted. You get something that's a little bit mentholated, a little bit minty, a little bit incensey, a little bit like solvent or paint thinner, like fumes, a little bit woody, a little bit kind of green leaf and herbal, a little bit cannabis like. Very, very multifaceted and quite interesting. It is a plant, and the flower from the plant is used in in kinds of uh, more natural kind of medicines. But yeah, this is very interesting as a material. I'm not sure I would use it in a perfume blend myself, but it would definitely give an interesting facet because, it, like I say, it is very multifaceted. The next raw material we are going to have a sniff of is a violet leaf absolute. Uh, this is diluted down to 10%, but violet leaf, it almost has a dry kind of quality to it. Like in, in the territory of like an orris butter kind of dry. And it also has like maybe a little bit kind of facets of hay. And I think that in part with the dry kind of quality to it, I can imagine hay. A hint of a sweetness, a little bit chalky, I would say. Almost nuances of tobacco to me, like a little bit tobacco-y, a little bit hay-like, a little bit chalky, a little bit sweet. Again, with that kind of... Um, Le like herbal leafy kind of texture to it but with this slightly <sighs> slightly sweet powdery facets covering the whole thing 
kind of a warmth and softness and cushion-like quality to it. Like I say, almost slightly powdery in a way. The slower that I smell it, you do get slightly irisy, orisy kind of tones from this one. And the more pleasant it is, in general, I'm not of the biggest fan of Violet Leaf. But when you smell it softly over a more sort of prolonged time, it does grow on me, I would say. It's definitely not unpleasant. It has almost a waxy quality to it at the same time. Vegetal kind of aspect to it too, which I guess maybe I'm not kind of totally fond of personally. The next raw material we're going to smell is Carnation Absolute. So Carnation, how would I describe this? It's obviously floral for a start. <laughs> you get that thick floral texture. There is something a little bit hamster cagey about it, like it reminds me a little bit of sawdust. You get the, the hits of the, of the thick kind of floral petal, subtly sweet, but with this more, almost like I say, like almost like a sawdust or like hamster cage kind of vibe mixed in with that kind of floral vibe. So it comes off a little bit more of a kind of a, almost like a woody floral in a way in terms of how it comes across as a raw material by itself. I get woody facets, I get sawdust facets, I get that kind of floral petal, kind of thick white floral, but with this kind of woody backbone. There is just something that's ever so slightly animalic in a way, a little bit animal-like. Just a hint of something that's not quite funky, not quite indolic, but just a pinch of something that's just a little bit saucy about it. It's not one of my favourite florals, to be honest. There is also a slight... Just a hint of a fresh quality to it. It is quite unique as a floral, and I think... <sighs> A little bit more of a masculine floral, I would say, the way that it comes across. It's, it's less of a girly feminine floral and would suit men uh, more easily, I would say. It's not, like I say, it's not overly... Certain florals can be quite feminine. This one is definitely more on the slightly more masculine side. And I think that comes from that kind of woody kind of texture that the floral has. And when you smell it for a little bit longer, you almost get something like a rooibos tea. I get something tea-like. There's a tea quality to it. Think in the realms of rooibos tea, the South African tea. Slightly herbal, tea-like, watery. Quite nice. Not my favourite floral, but definitely not unpleasant. And next up, we're going to have a smell of laurel leaf. So what I get from this laurel leaf, this is a distilled essential oil from Turkey. It's something quite sharp and definitely fresh. Parallels with, I would say, frankincense in a way, in, in the same kind of fresh quality that frankincense has. I get a similar kind of fresh quality from this and a similar kind of sharpness as well almost mentholated, almost. If you can imagine a slightly mentholated frankincense, I think that will put you in the ballpark of, of laurel leaf. Laurel leaf or bay laurel, bay leaf. Um, this is, like I say, the best way I can think is mentholated frankincense or maybe even clove slightly. Clove has a similarish kind of. It's, it's the, I'm trying to describe the sharp, piercing quality that it has. Clove has a similar kind of aspect. Personally, it's not my cup of tea. I probably I don't gravitate towards it personally. That kind of fresh quality that goes in the direction of of mentholated or clove-like or frankincense. I love it. it. Has these kind of frankincense similarities in a way. Frankincense can almost come across a little bit spicy and that can that has that kind of vibe But like I say slightly more ment mentholated is maybe the wrong word, but I'm trying to describe the fresh quality that it has and So interesting notes Yeah, if you think somewhere in the lines of mentholated frankincense or clove 
that kind of that kind of vibe, I think you'll be kind of in the ballpark for that. The next material we're going to smell is myrtle, and this is an essential oil from Morocco. This does have a subtle freshness, also a subtle sweetness, a little resinousy in a way, I would say. A little bit more subtle in the strength in comparison to some of the other materials that we've just smelled. This is a little bit softer in the, the, in the strength impact of it. The vibe that it gives off will remind you maybe of something a little bit sterile, bandages, kind of antiseptic almost, I guess. Which is funny because that's a kind of exactly what it's used for. <laughs> So the myrtle, the essential oil, is actually used as an antiseptic. Um, reading about it, essential oil treats digestive, pulmonary and urinary infections, as well as skin ulcers. But it does have, funnily enough, that kind of medicinal smell that we associate with, with that kind of thing. It definitely smells that way. But in general, you get something subtly sweet, a little bit fresh, a little bit piercing, a little bit resinous but with that thing that you do associate with antiseptic kind of quality and bandages and wrappings and things. So funny that that's the way that it smells and that's the use of it, so to speak. So interesting raw material in the scent profile and use, I guess. The next raw material we're going to have a sniff of is a geranium absolute. Um, so yes, this oil, if you can see the color of it is dark green. I mean, it's it's very green. It's as green as you can possibly make something, which is very cool. <laughs> it looked great. In a, if it, that was just diluted in the perfume's alcohol and bottled up, the colour of the perfume would be amazing. So geranium does have a little bit of a light kind of fresh quality to it, a little bit lemony maybe in a way, that kind of fresh floral. But it also has a little bit like the carnation where I described that it has something a little bit sawdusty or woody about it. I also get a little bit of that in geranium as well, or in this particular geranium absolute. There's something fresh, citrusy like to it, but there's all nuance. But there's also this underlining feeling of warm kind of woodiness almost which kind of I picture like very delicate soft subtle kind of sawdust maybe maybe more like balsa wood sawdust. This is a floral where I would say that it doesn't scream feminine if that makes sense like you could use that more in masculine perfumes without scaring the men away like there's certain florals that smell girly so to speak in terms of how culture perceives them and certain florals that don't. And this, I would say, goes more easily into a masculine territory, should I say. In, in, I'm trying to describe that in the best way I can. <laughs> it's not a massively feminine floral. It's it's definitely more unisex, easy for a man, easier for a man to kind of pull off and enjoy. When certain men associate certain florals with being very feminine, this one I don't think does that, personally. There is an interesting kind of slightly fresh quality to it when you breathe it kind of softly and slowly. But yeah, I like that kind of more woody warm texture that is behind it. That would pair very well with something like Oud, like Oud and Geranium. This geranium, this particular Geranium Absolute would work well with an Oud Accord behind it because of the natural woody facets that this has and the slightly fresh quality that it has. Certain Ouds mimic similar kind of profiles. So this would work very well with certain kinds of ouds from certain regions. This particular distillation of Geranium Absolute, definitely easier for a, for a man to pull off. The colour's gorgeous, it's a really lovely kind of bright dark green. Uh, the next raw material we're going to have a sniff of is an Osmanthus Absolute. So we'll give this a whirl. There is not much left in this, in this dabber stick. So this is quite thick. It's slightly sweet and fruity. There's a similar theme in terms of, I said, Carnation and the Geranium Absolute had something a little bit woody about it. The Osmanthus Absolute also has something that might remind you of hay or kind of very light kind of wood shavings and hay, that kind of vibe. 
a little bit more hay like I would say but with a little bit of a, a fruity kind of sweet tone and also something just a little bit just a little bit animalic it reminds me a little bit just of a hint of goat's hair so which is interesting and another one I think would work great with certain kinds of oud um, in terms of like blending so to speak in fact, pairing the geranium with the osmanthus with an oud, I think, would be quite interesting. Because they they all they, they share similar facets together. I think they would complement each other well. In terms of the fruity quality that's described with osmanthus, it's described as having a honeyed-like apr apricot kind of fruit note. Uh, some people even say peach, but... Yeah, you do get that more fruity floral vibe from this Osmanthus Absolute. But like I say, there's um, almost something like woody about it. Leather is mentioned as a facet to this. And I can totally kind of relate in my brain when that's mentioned that you can imagine something leathery like with this kind of fruity floral thing. It's thick, it's textured, it's nuanced, quite complicated as a smell by itself. So yeah, Osmanthus Absolute, very interesting material. I think, like I say, the geranium and the Osmanthus would, in my brain, work really well with, with certain kinds of oud. The next material we're gonna have a smell of is Champaka, and this one is from India. Which is cool because right now, as you're watching this video, I am actually physically in India. This is a pre-recorded video. I'm not actually at home. I filmed this before leaving. <laughs> I'm still in India. I will be back home on March the 1st. So, hello. <laughs> I won't be replying to comments probably until I get home. Just so you know, I'm not ignoring anyone in the comments. I'm just away in India for the last three weeks. With this Champaka... There is a similar theme because I'm going to kind of say the same thing. <laughs> There's something a little bit sawdusty about it or a little bit hayfields, sawdust. It has a dry quality to it. It's not an overly sweet floral. It's not an overly feminine floral. This one, again, easily worn by a man. Like men shouldn't be scared of florals. There are plenty of floral materials that don't smell like uber feminine. If you think of like more like more feminine smelling florals, I would think of like peony, for example. Not many guys want to smell like peony because it does smell in your mind the way that we're conditioned as a civilization comes across more feminine. This, however, does not. It's totally genderless. But yeah, more woody in its texture. A little bit thick, a little bit dry. There's something about Champaka as well that also kind of, I can kind of imagine tea. Like there's almost like tea smell to it. Like a herbal tea. So I get something herbal tea-like and a little bit woody, like sawdusty. So again, definitely more easy, definitely more easier for men, these last few florals. So I don't think men should be like terrified of florals. The next material we've smelled before in, with, other, with other videos, but it's an interesting note. I like smelling it. It's Palo Santo. This is from Ecuador. This is a fascinating material. This is weird. It's like I get a little bit of something like Atlas Cedarwood, which is kind of milky, lactonic in a way, but woody you get you don't get the grain like virginian or texas cedar you get a kind of a milky kind of smell the palo santo goes in that direction where you get something a little bit creamy a little bit milky but then there's this fresh quality to it a little bit frankincensey a little bit almost citrus or lemony like in a way with just a hint of a sweetness but also a hint of something a little bit diesel-like, like diesel. It's it's totally a really complicated smell by itself. <laughs> it's incensey, it's milky, it's almost diesel. It's almost 
fuel-like in a way, I guess, or mechanical oil or something. It's very unique, very interesting, very odd. Works well in incense accords, incense perfumes. Very, very interesting aroma. You could sit and smell that for like 20 minutes and just keep pulling new ideas out from it. <laughs> it's very multifaceted. I like it. It's, it's an interesting material. It's very difficult to describe. You really have to smell these yourself. Hopefully I can describe them in some way that you can kind of relate a picture in your mind. The last one I thought we'd do is a slight comparison. And what we're going to compare are two sandalwoods. This one is an Australian sandalwood essential oil, and we're going to compare it with an Indian sandalwood essential oil. So first we're going to smell the Australian sandalwood. So, straight away, I mean, I think most of us know what sandalwood smells like. You obviously get sandalwood, <laughs> first of all. But it's lighter, it's slightly watery, it's a little bit milky or diluted in a way. And it also has a slight texture to it. When I talked about Virginian or Texas cedarwood, I described like a grain or a bite to the wood. The Australian sandalwood has little aspects of both. Like I described the Atlas cedar as having been milky and then the Virginian being more like a bite or a grain. This has a little bit of both going on. You do get a watery milky texture with a hint of a grain as well. All the time you're not mistaken that it's sandalwood, but it's it's lighter, it feels more diffusive. It's not quite as rich in a way, not quite as thick, not quite as nuanced. It's lacking a little bit of the spicy texture that Indian sandalwood has. So when I go in now and I smell my Indian essential oil sandalwood, which is here. So in comparison, the Indian one feels more thick, it feels fuller in a way, more full-bodied. The slight kind of spice nuances to it, it's slightly spiced, it's, it's creamier, it's got more full-bodied thickness, I would say. When I go back to the Australian, you notice a clear difference of it being more translucent, more watery, more diffusive. Just lighter in general. The, the Indian is thicker, denser in all regards. More buttery. This one is less so. And this one's got varying texture. Like I say, this has got a little bit of grain, a little bit of a watery milkiness at the same time. I think they can be utilised in different aspects. I think the Indian is more diffusive and lighter and if you want more of a maybe more of a modern sandalwood that is a little bit more airy then the Australian is probably a bit a better option for you and when I smell something like the Santal 33 from Le Labo it would be if it's using a, a bit of a real sandalwood essential oil it definitely would probably most likely be the Australian between the two of them, my preference personally is the Indian sandalwood, but the Australian sandalwood definitely is useful in different in different ways. If you want a more multifaceted sandalwood, I would combine both of them, honestly, in the same formula. If you want something a little bit lighter, a little bit more modern and diffusive, then the Australian one would be better. If you want something a bit thicker and more creamier and more dense, then the Indian would be better. And so there's 10 raw materials smelling them and having a little chit chat about them. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like these kinds of videos where we kind of sit and we smell some raw materials, then maybe we'll do some more in the future. I've got millions of synthetics. We could do a synthetic one maybe next time and smell some synthetics together. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you again very soon, my friends. Take care. Bye. One time he disappeared for oh, two or three days. When he came back, they, they asked him where he'd been, and he said, oh, just sailing. <laughs>